I'm afraid that exploring this island would only consume precious time that I need for my work. I shall be remaining here. Bring me proof that the sallow man is dead, God Woken. Until then, I have nothing further to say to you. Hmm. Good. Your reward, as promised. The altars of the gods each reveal an affinity towards either the sun or the moon. There are pillars outside the entrance to the Council Academy. Align each pillar to the corresponding celestial body. Ralik, Vrogir, and Zolstissa favored the sun while Duna, Tyrsandilius, Zantedsa, and Amadia favored the moon. And the lever that opens the entrance. It requires a great power source. I have one for my own use, of course, but you will have to find something for yourself.
The elf prays hard, his eyes soon. Tyrus and Delius will give us the power to smash the ring. He prays on. The mother tree calls you, Godwoken. The mother tree calls. Climb to the heart. May your God be with you. Ho oh there. May I be of service? Tell us what to do, Tyr. Not every day one meets his annihilator. The very man who in the darkest memory failed. You pretend to be a prince of the House of War. Away from me! The creature stares at you like a wolf observing a plump lamb. Your gold can't save you, not against blades. He gently corrects. But perhaps I can. Speak, Godwogen, but be sharp. Time passes quickly. Some people just. Don't
Mother, you don't look well. How vulnerable you are. At heart. What's on your mind, darling? Now that the Master's dead? Might as well... I am the scion of the Mother Tree. Her heart speaks through me. The scion of the Mother Tree. Let me talk to her, please. She and I have business. The Shadow Prince is dead, and I ate his wicked heart. The Mother is angry. She desires the enemy's heart. But you may still make amends. Sibyl, your actions cause great pain to the Mother. You cause great pain to all elves when you run from duty. You cause great pain to yourself. But now you are here, the mother forgives. It is time for you to fulfill your destiny. You are the prime scion. You are the daughter of the mother tree. You are the one that will replace her. You must take root now. The mother is sick. Soon she dies. It is time. The elves need a new mother. They need you. Take root, Sabil. The mother demands it of you. This is a momentous decision. I'm not entirely certain. You're right. I'm the Prime Scion. I cannot refuse. Bless you, Sabil. I bow before the mother. Now close your eyes and listen to the heart. Become one with the heart. Sibyl closes her eyes for what seems only a moment, then opens them wide with a gasp. <gasps> I... I heard the great ancestral heartbeat. Louder and louder, in unison with mine. It felt as if my mind, my single palace became a city, then an empire. Then a, a whole world filled with every morsel of knowledge and power ever accumulated by any elf since the birth of the species. It was daunting. It was too much. It was far too much. It was perfect. When I opened my eyes, I... I knew I was no longer the same woman. I'm more. I'm a people. It's fate and its future. You feel it, don't you, Sabil? You are now the heart. Go on from here to become our god as well.
Sabeel touches your arm. Look, it's Sahela. Sabeel, it is so good to see you once more. I must speak with you. It is of the greatest importance. At last I see clearly. I know what must be done. The mother is sick. She is weak. Her grip slips at last. You make her so. You kill her scions. You are strong now, Sabeel. You are prime scion. You are godwoken. This is a unique opportunity. The impossible is now possible. Kill her. Free us from her tyranny, please. Finish what you start. One more kill. You must strike at her heart. Do this for me. Do this for all of us. Set us free. I cannot. I did my duty as Prime Scion. I am rooted, Sahela. I will be the new Mother Tree one day. You must not be. You must not be. Even if you are rooted, you can still undo the Tyrant Tree. I hope you change your mind, Sabeel. You, who loves her freedom above all. Find her heart and destroy it. Set yourself free, Sabeel. Set us all free. Please, go ahead. It's strange to picture it, isn't it? To be rooted. Essentially, it means that my people's memories will become my memories. All of them. It means that when eventually I die, I'll become the new mother tree, as my roots join with those of all other ancestor trees all over the world. So, I guess that also means that when my time comes, you may have to water me once in a while. Oh, don't worry. It'll be fun. You can recline against me with a good book, cherished in the shade I'll throw. Who knows? You may even be a god by then. Gods can talk to trees, can't they? We'll chat. Of course, as Mother Tree, I will always be responsible for the entire elven race. Forever. Your heart aches as you see a deep sadness pervade her. I guess I forgot to say that being rooted also means I've given up on the dreams of freedom I so cherished as a child. She laughs. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but it cheers me up nonetheless. Now that the Master's dead... The mother would bid you leave. Do not wait for her to change her mind. You would bring death? Death come...
yield to none.
boring. What's on your mind, darling? Now that the Master's... Sibyl lays a hand upon your forearm. Step back. I have business with the Mother. I'm going to kill her. You must allow this. It's important. Sibyl reaches out to the tree. She allows her power to burgeon and grow. And then she directs it all at the heart. The tree shudders and then screams. The heart of the mother tree withers and dies. All is still. Speak if you wish to. She sighs. Deep down, it, it feels like a betrayal, a just betrayal. I know that many will say I failed my people, but I don't think I have. Even as I sat on the Prime Scion's throne as a child, watching pilgrims pass by in worship, I could hear her whisper, much like the Master would whisper, Mother and Master. There was precious little difference between the two. Both of them longed for power so absolute it's no more than an abstract. Yet it is that very abstract that causes so much actual misery for those that stand in its way. My heart may be conflicted, but my mind is not. I did the right thing. Now that the Master's dead... The ghostly tiger bear when the god for you bear.
I'm afraid that exploring this island would only consume precious time that I need for my work. I shall be remaining here. Tread carefully, my dear. Those are black ring banners that I spy on the shore. The doors loom above you, one step closer to the Council, one step closer to Divinity. The others must surely be thinking the same. After all, only one of you can ultimately ascend. 
Time for an honest discussion, perhaps. Beast looks not at you, or even through you, but beyond you. Beyond the Academy, to a place far from you, but close to him. I know I talk a lot, but I don't talk about the Isle of Mists that much. No reason to, most of the time. Can't stop thinking of that time today, though. My crewmates and me, we can handle prison. We can handle death, even. But ain't no one should handle the Isle. You don't see the mist. You don't hear it. It's just there. In front of you, on top of you, and in you. Then the ripping starts. Your dreams ripped away. Your thoughts. Your self. It's in you. And it is you. Your body is meat. Perfectly preserved. The mist keeps it safe. It's your soul that's boiled. I'm not looking to ascend because I want the power. I'm not doing any of this for me. I'm doing it so the rebels never need face the isle. So the mist will never be in them. So they can be truly free, fearless, themselves. As soon as I stop Operation Downfall, I rejoin them. As far as I'm concerned, that's where my divine duties begin and end. Beast pauses, then nods. I will do this for you, but I also do it for more than you. So, I guess this is it. I can't see two ways about it. I need to be myself again. Finally. I can't risk getting shut out by this demon. It wants to keep me quiet. To rule in place of me. I... I need to make sure I'm strong enough that it can never seize control again. I won't let it make me silent in my own skin. I need to ascend. Let's do this. We're finally here, on the doorstep of divinity. Merits a word, doesn't it? After all, only one of us can become the new divine. But don't worry, I won't stand in your way. From the moment you came back for me on that ship, I knew you were special. You've proven it time and again. She kisses you on the cheek. You will be the new divine. I will remain myself. All I ever wanted, really.
So, this is the ancient academy of the Eternals. I suspect they've seen better days. A bit like yourself. A void woken stares intently at you. This creature seems different. It sways with a sinewy purpose. Intelligence glints in its eyes. Step back, Hanola. The time of mortals draws to a close. We have returned to claim what is ours. We have returned to claim the world. All mortals are thieves. You have stolen our world. All the world is ours. We are not the void, mortal. We are of the world. You are of the void. When we were banished, you were made. You owe your entire existence to us. You owe us everything. We were betrayed by the seven usurpers. They took our powers and used them to create you. They sent us to the void and thought we'd never return. They were wrong. And now they will face the wrath of the king. They were little more than local barons until Fane the traitor found the veil. In their greed, the seven tore its fabric. This gave them power. It made them gods. And it let the void into the world and saw us banished to its clutches. You left us no choice. We had no other tools. We shall return, and then we shall cast out the void. Do not resist us. We shall be who we once were, and the world shall be restored to what it was before we were betrayed. Because of that betrayal, you exist. Because of what was stolen from us, you exist. Because of the powers we lost, you exist. We will have them back. But we will not fight your husk, mortal. The time will come when the thieving coward inside of you must step out. If it can still walk, you shall end. What you were told hangs in the air like a noxious cloud. The Void Woken were Eternals, robbed of their source in order to create you. They allied themselves with the Void so they could return. Looks to me like they'd do just about anything to survive. The mark of civilization is knowing when it's your turn to lay down so that others may live. Suddenly, it all makes sense. Folks will do anything to survive. Who could blame them? I can understand their anger if not their methods. Revenge should be exact, not indiscriminate.
an automaton still and silent before you. A faint glow pulsates from within its chest cavity, dormant perhaps. A compartment in the side of the contraption appears to be empty. There's a part missing. The capacitor sparks and fizzles. Then, the pulsating light begins circulating throughout the automaton. It rises. The automaton looms above you. A lone, glowing eye takes you in dispassionately. The automaton peers in close at your face. You are a fine specimen. Most fine. Your arrival is long overdue. This is the Academy. It is a place of great learning. I am the Seneschal. I serve both those who teach and those who come to learn. Those like you. Allow me to show you. The Academy exists to help, uh, to help unveil the Divine from amongst the Godwoken. You must enter the Temple, then prove yourself in the Arena of the One. Godwoken should, should, should be able to enter without issue. It seems that the Academy has been impeded due to neglect or interference. I appear to have been tampered with. Whoever is responsible may have caused similar damage elsewhere. Apologies, Godwoken. I trust you will be able to overcome any difficulties. It's quite simple. Defeat all others. The automaton fixes its illuminated gaze upon you. The light within it flickers for a moment. It addresses you, garbled in places. God I am here to serve. Discipline is paramount. Thank <laughs> you. 